Well, here today we're at the medical research. The medical research will wire people up and we can control how far we send pain in the human body. We're going to teach pressure points today. I teach 361 pressure points all over the human body. Pressure points control your being, your standing, your thinking, your moving, your getting up, getting down, because they control the nerves. They control the nerves. You have nerves all over the body that control every motion. The entry into that system is a pressure point. What makes a pressure point a pressure point? A pressure point is a place where a nerve ends in the skin. A pressure point is a place where two nerves cross. A pressure point is a place where the two nerves join as the letter Y. You have receptors in your body, actually millions of receptors. Receptors that monitor the hot and cold in this room. If the room is too hot, you're going to sweat. If the room is too cold, your motor is going to turn on. You have little receptors constantly monitoring this. They monitor your motion. They monitor your reaction. And they feed it in from the pressure point into the nervous system of the human body. Some people think the pressure points are too small to be used in a fight situation. Totally wrong. Hundreds of years ago, they were used to kill people. They're deadly. As you get into pressure point study, you'll find out that they get deadlier and deadlier the more that you learn. Some people think they can't be used in a fight situation because they're too small. They go, yes, well, I believe in acupuncture, acupressure. The pressure point must be too small. That's wrong, too. The area of activation for a pressure point is the size of a United States 25 cent piece, a quarter. You mean if I put 361 quarters and tape them to your body that I can't hit or manipulate one in a fight situation? You bet I can, and so will you at the end of the day. You'll be able to do it by either studying this tape or participating in a seminar. You have the area of a quarter, 361 of them all over the body. One of the reasons we didn't find this by accident it is done by accident in boxing, football. If you get involved in pressure points, every sports injury you see from now on, it will change your way of thinking. Because you're going to look at that injury and go, wow, he came down with the correct angle and direction. And he fell into the knee, which is what happened last year in the football season when a leg got broke. The key word is angle and direction. The human body is geared to accept pain straight on. That's why we didn't find this by accident in the martial arts. Angle and direction, the nerves in the human body are geared to carry pain one-third the length of the nerve. That's why your finger is divided in three, to remind you of that. If you've ever been hit, in the stomach or the solar plex or region and doubled over in pain and felt the pain, that's only one third the amount of pain that I can cause or that a good pressure point fighter can cause. Because the key is angle and direction. Angle and direction, I've asked experienced boxers. In fact, I'm working out with one now. And I asked this man who's undefeated in the light heavyweight division. How would you hit this person? And I pointed to the spot I one hit. I said, why don't you hit him right here? He said to me, I'll give him an uppercut. I'll deliver from here. That's exactly the response I expected. If a nerve ends in the skin like that, and you uppercut that guy, you do not affect the nerve. You can hit him with a right cross, and you do not affect that nerve. Oh, it feels it, but it cuts off the pain. That's what it's there for. It's your safety device. You can hit him with a left cross, a right cross, an uppercut. None are going to do the job. But if you follow angle and direction, and that's the most important part, if you read my books, study my videotapes, or participate in, or watch this seminar even, 
you better get the angle and direction correct because that's the most important part. You do not just hit the other person because there's a pressure point there. Uppercut won't work, right cross won't work, left cross. But if you come this way, you will send the pain down the nerve, bypassing the one-third, and it will go the entire length of the nerve and send a message into that person's body. So that's how this works. Angle and direction is the key word. It is the weirdest moves that martial artists do that are the most deadly, the most dangerous. And yet most martial artists in the world don't know what those moves are for. There's a trick to getting into pressure points though. And that's why we didn't find it by accident. These receptors are touch points, rub points, or hit points. And if anybody else has a cell phone on, turn it off. Please. Just turn it off. Anyways, they are... We can't feel bad because I just watched The Tonight Show the other night and somebody's phone rang in the audience. And Jay Leno went up and answered it. <laughs> True story. True story. And they were shocked on the other end. <laughs> they were talking, now talking to Jay Leno. Anyways, he said, what are you doing to my cousin's house? When the pressure point comes up, you got to hit it with the right angle direction. And now there's a key to get into pressure points. Some of the pressure points in the human body only need touched. Some need rubbed. And some need hit. So if I tell you this is a touch point, you're only to touch it. You're not to think. Hitting a touch point doesn't do it any good. Touching it is the trick to getting into that pressure point. Rubbing, a rubbing action, is the trick to getting into a rub pressure point. And an impact or hit action is the trick to getting into a hit pressure point. And that's why we didn't find it by accident, because even if people come up to me and they go, well, I know pressure points, I'll point to one. I'll say, what, how about that one? Or I'll have them point to one. And if they point to one correctly, I'll say, is that a touch point? A rub point or a hit point? That's when you separate the man from the boys, because they don't know in most cases. Even if they're an acupuncturist. They know there's a point there, but they don't know how to hurt it because they've been studying healing their whole life. You can go to a doctor right out of medical school and ask him how you kill somebody. He doesn't know. He would tell you, you must use a knife or a gun, but he doesn't know because he's been studying healing. You can't go up to an acupuncturist and ask him, do I hit that, rub that, or touch him? They probably won't know because they know how to put the needle in correctly. They know how to do that. Everybody hold your right arm out. I want to see the soft part, the under part. Everybody take your two fingers like that. And everybody just go to your wrist. Just, for now, just you point at yours. I'll explain where they are and then you'll be correct. But you just point on the soft side. And everybody say two. Two. And go up the middle arm and this time everybody say two. Four. Four. And now go up near your elbow and say six. Six. These are the six most important pressure points that you are ever going to learn. They're the closest to you in a combat situation. They're always available. If the person grabs you, they'll be right there. If they punch at you, they'll be right in this region. So let's go back and repeat. As long as I've been in the martial arts, no pressure points. These are still the six most important. And the problem I see when I go out to, to do some seminars, people are uh, practicing, they're trying to bypass these because they want to get to the neck or the head because you're going to drop somebody. That's true. But these enable you to get to the neck and the head and set the person up in route. Because when you get into my study, when you tap a pressure point, it sends a neurological message and you catch up to that on the same highway of nerve and you, that's how you drop the person. Everybody understand that now? So right in here, there's never a pressure point at the joint. Never at the joint. Here, let me use you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> this turns out right there. Give me, give me a right hand. Never a pressure point at the actual joint. One half inch up. Only a half inch. Picture a 25 cent piece here and a 25 cent piece here. Go to the middle of the arm, where this muscle ends on everyone. On 95% of the people in the world, it's halfway on the arm. 
So if you strike in the halfway, you cannot be incorrect. It's where this muscle ends, and this tendon attaches the muscle to the bone, and it's on this side of the large bone. And then right across from it is the other pressure point. Now when you get up to here, we actually have two pressure points in here, and I'll cover them as we get into it, but you have two right in here. And you have one right here. So it's two, four, six, and now you have a seven right in here. And these two fit together and work well used together. Nothing you can see on your body. Everybody like looks. Nothing you can see. This is a touch point. A lot of people have found that one by accident in the martial arts because you all grapple and grab at each other. Make a nice tight fist. Now don't let me bend your wrist. So give me strength. If I try to bend this man's wrist, I can't do it. The pressure points on the small bone side, here and here, underneath, control this man's wrist. The pressure points on the large bone side control him keeping his fist shut. We'll get into those a little bit later. I'm going to make a fist, and I'm going to use this bone that goes to my thumb, not the knuckle, this bone. He's going to make a nice tight fist, and not give me strength so I can't bend it. I'm going to take this bone and place it against the touch pressure point, and you'll see that this is what happens. I get control of his wrist, and size and strength does not matter. So he can have a nice tight fist. If I try to bend his wrist by any other method, I can't do it. But if I just press against the small bone, this is what we have happen. What you have there is a small nerve, a branch of the ulnar nerve that does the letter Y. And I'm really squeezing that Y together and pressing it into my opponent's own bone. Now there's no time in the world that I would stand around doing this. In fact, that's the most difficult way to grab or bend his wrist. Because when he makes a fist, all the nerves are in their proper position. But when a person reaches out to grab you, and that could be your gi, it could be your throat, he stretches his own nerve. Why is that important? Because everyone has to learn pressure points. Children have to learn pressure points. It's a child that will be grabbed in a kidnapping situation. If you do wrist grappling, you're working on it. What's the chances of a young child or maybe some housewife grab for real now in the parking lot or whatever and she goes to do her technique that she's been at the karate school trying to learn for as much as 20 years and no one ever told her there's a pressure point she has to touch. She could be near it. Hold me tight. I'm not going to move his hand. Because no one told that person, and they won't either, they'll lose confidence in every technique they were taught, because no one told them that the middle finger has to press that nerve against the bone. Now he can hold me tight, and when I just go for here, I got him off in one second. The name of my first book is called Kyusho Jitsu. Kyusho Jitsu means one second fighting. That's what that means. It means if they grab you and you touch them, the ball's in your court in one second. And once you get control of that nerve, you can put the person down, you can put him in a bend, you can hit him elsewhere, or you can slam and sprain or break his wrist. You must know that the pressure point is here and it's the size of a quarter. He can grab you and you can be anywhere else and you're not going to move the individual. But when you touch that pressure point and pull that against. In my first book I explain torque. Torque and complex torque. Torque means to take up, make a muscle. Go ahead, make a muscle. Oh, you did. Just kidding. <laughs> Get him all worried there. When they make a muscle, you can always move skin. I can always move skin. Torque means to take up the slack in that loose skin before you do the pressure point. So I don't go straight under the small bone. I go a little bit to the soft side and push against the small bone so that I'm taking up the slack in his skin. In a combative situation, if he were to grab me, I would go a little bit on the other side of his small bone and pull all of that loose skin into the small bone to make sure I trap his nerve. 
It's simple, it's easy to do. Once you practice it a few times, you'll automatically just go for that spot. You won't just grab anywhere anymore. I watch people do grappling, and one time they're here, one time they're here, one time they're here, depending on what's comfortable, depending on the size of their opponent, it can't be that way. Picture a quarter being right underneath, a half inch away from the joint. It's never at, there's never a pressure point at the joint. There's never a pressure point on the bone. There's never a pressure point on the muscle. They're between the muscle. There's one between the muscle. They're at the end of the muscle. They're even under a muscle, but they're never on the muscle. And that's what you really want to do. Now what I'm gonna have everybody do, if you're gonna pair off, you're gonna get your opponent to go like this and make a fist. You're gonna make a tight fist for me. This can't be limp. Biggest mistake people make is they get this limp and say it ain't working. If you ever straighten out a horseshoe, you need a metal anvil, the horseshoe, and a metal hammer. This is the same thing. His nerve is the horseshoe. This is the hammer, his bone's the anvil. So you must have a firm fist and that'll firm up this bone. Everybody has this bone that runs to the thumb and you use the bone against his nerve for this technique. Now I want you to practice it like this first. Because if you can find it this way, every time to do this, then grabbing it is simple. Let's everybody pair off and try that. And I'll, I'll correct you and the people with me will help correct. Steve Gupton, you help correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Good stuff, isn't it? We're just starting. <laughs> I found no one in the world that these points don't control these joints. And I've done hundreds of seminars in 20 different countries around the world. Thousands and thousands of people. And I've found no one that we can't release joints, release all the joints of the body, because these pressure points do control the joint. You will run into a few people, and the way it goes, I always tell you the good and the bad. First of all, with pressure points, they work best when your opponent is larger than you. They're a little more difficult to do when your opponent is smaller than you. Doesn't mean you can't do them. That's why the one knuckle fist was created. That's why the one knuckle out that way was created. If you're a larger person, you're going to learn to use that knuckle or that knuckle or even just your fist knuckle or your thumb knuckle or the knuckle over the small bone side against the pressure point if you're a large person. Large person, larger pressure point. Small person, smaller pressure point. That's why we heard the martial arts was a small man's fighting art. We thought it was because he could outmove the big guy. But we found out that wasn't true when it came to full contact fighting. The big guy had always run in and just tread on the small guy. <laughs> but that's not true with this. Little guy, bigger pressure point on the big guy. It works best if your opponent's larger than you. Pressure points don't work well on children and very elderly people. That's actually their protection. The pressure points come to surface as the child hits puberty and develop some muscle. Older, real old people are hard to do some of the pressure points because everything's soft and skin sagging and it's their protection is what it is of the young and the old. And as you do the pressure points, you just pay attention to the touching, rubbing and the hitting. We're now gonna do a rub pressure point right here, right here. Let me use you again. Right? I'm going to... I might have a marker here. I'm not going to mark it. Oh. I thought I had it there. You don't care if I mark you, do you? Yeah. No. <laughs> right here, there's a hollow spot. Everybody has a little hollow spot right in here. Not at the joint, cartilage, muscle coming in, 
large bone side, right there's a hole. In that hole is a little branch of the radial nerve that it, it, it'll move if you go after it. So that's why we rub that pressure point. We get it like a, a, a little minnow trapped in a small pond and we catch it. It's right where my thumb is. So he can take a closer look here and this makes that point active. When he grabs me, release one minute, I'll use all of these knuckles. Same knuckles I make a fist so that I don't slip off. I will go to the inside and I will rub up and down, north and south. I will not go sideways. People think, well, this cuts it off. I don't want to cut it off. I want to send a message on that nerve. I want to rub up and down, and I want one of my knuckles to get in that hole to release like that. Hold tight. When I get my release, it's that easy because I'm going in that hole. Actually, the faster I rub, the faster I release and can attack my opponent. The faster I rub, the faster the release, the faster I can attack him. Because as I rub, I'm sending a neurological message up the body. And I have a quarter to stay on. But it's on the inside, not on the bone. People teach in magazines and books to hit, hold tight. That only hurts me. And this gets me out that quick. And a lot of people teach getting out by the thumbs. It's totally incorrect. About 18 years ago, near my town, about 30 miles from my town of Pennsylvania, I live in Reading, Pennsylvania, there was a lady attacked in the parking lot. And she used the technique that she was taught to school where a guy grabbed both arms to pin her and she came out by the thumbs. Everybody knows to get out by the thumbs. Children know that. Black folks try to make that a secret. It's no secret. Look at the size of my opponent here. Look at the size of him. And he's strong. Hold tight. If I pull out by the thumbs, I can get out. But I'm pulling my momentum towards me. In most cases where I see people teaching this, if I try to pull out fast and hard, I'm going to go flying over backwards or backwards. And that's what happened to that lady. She pulled out, but the man just took his hands and pushed her right into the back seat of the car. That was the technique. Perfect. Because she's pulling her momentum towards herself. You don't want the momentum towards you. You've got to get out of every technique towards your opponent. This guy's younger. Stronger than me. <laughs> Faster than me. He grabs me. Why would I want to pull out? He's ahead of the game. I'm giving him the advantage in a self-defense situation. And nobody tells you this in a self-defense situation, but I'm telling him, hold me tight. He cannot stop me from going over and doing that and hitting him. And close him with it. He cannot stop that action. So I'm not pulling out. I'm going from here to here. Boom. And I have my technique. And actually, I rub nice. If I rub, if I rub hard and fast, he's coming at me like a freight train, and he's all set up to be hit. It's all set up to be hit. And people say, well, geez, this guy's strong. I can't get my hands that way. Let me just show you something. Stand here a little bit so the camera picks it up. 45. Put two nice tight fists here. If I try to move your hands this way, don't let me. Yes, sir. Can't move them. And neither can you. But now I'm going to move your hands this way. Inward. Don't let me. He can't stop me. Why? Because man lacks muscle here. Right here. Man lacks muscle here to stop that action. And actually more important, 
than that. Now there's muscle here, if we get technical, but it only holds bones together. When I push his hands out, if I push him out, I'm pushing into shoulder, arm, back, chest. All of those muscles are coordinated to function together to keep his arm from moving. And yet I see so many people spending as much as 70 and 80% of their time on self-defense teaching to block inward outward and to stop the, the punch and stop the, and block his arm out. They even teach women, knock his hands away and attack him. She cannot knock his hands away. She can't move his hands if they're here. And if he had a hold of her throat or clothes, there's no way in the world because you can't move his hands now. So if he had a hold of my clothes or my throat, you don't have to, but I mean, if he had a hold of them, there's no way you're going to do this and get a release. And that's what they teach people. But yet he can't stop me from taking the hand and going in that way and this hand from going that way. And let me use this young lady here. Come up here. Yeah, come up here. Come over my side. Right here. Now, same thing. Put your hands out. Now try to separate them. Okay, now put them inward. Thank you. Sit down. Everybody see that? Give her a little round of applause. <laughs> and you're how old? 16? Yeah, 16 years old. You can move the hands in. And actually, she didn't know I was calling her up here to do that. I get children that have been doing that for a few seminars, and they just move adults' hands inward like nothing because they have the confidence in it. They just grab them and boom. Because the man lacked muscle here, but more importantly, he lacks it back here. He'd have to have a lump here like a bear has to be able to stop those hands from being moved inward. Okay, turn around. So even on the two-hand grab, that's why they can't stop that. That's why they can't stop that. That's why he couldn't stop me coming over and doing that. He thinks he can. He can hold me as tight as he wants. He can even be pulling outward. And as he pulls outward, it makes this so much easier to attack. What I'm going to have you do, I'm going to have your opponent grab you. Same arm grab. Don't cross arm grab yet. That's next. Same arm grab. Come on the inside. If you're up on the bone, you're wrong. Come on the inside. Make a tight fist and rub right there. Everybody try that, please. Thank you. Good stuff? Yes, sir. It's getting better. We'll build up. The way it is with pressure points, I always give you the good and the bad. They work best if your opponent's larger than you. Those of you doing it for the first time today, that's why I did a book. That's why we're doing a video. You'll be able to re-go over it. You, should, you might forget. You won't forget if you practice it once or twice. And then go back and, and relocate it. Because once you know where it is, you just go after it. You just go right after it. There are some pressure points, and we usually tell you the good and the bad, you'll learn to read what we call body anatomy. Body anatomy. You'll sometimes get a construction worker. It's only maybe one in a hundred thousand people. And you'll know when he, if he stuck that arm out to grab you, it's the kind of person whose wrist is about the same size all the way up. <laughs> you, you know, every now and then you see one. But that's usually somebody who, since he's been a child, has worked since he's been a child at labor. Not somebody who recently went into labor. But when, they, when they're children and they're carrying things and moving things, they get this big wrist. That nerve is sometimes, it's there, but it's deep. The minute I see the wrist, I would not waste rubbing action on that wrist. I would go to the next point, which is our hit point. The hit point. If I ever touched you on a rub point, I would not waste a second. I wouldn't keep rubbing to see what was wrong. If I touch you once and don't get the reaction I want, I attack the next point, which is at the end of the muscle. Here, let me use you again. I was using him over there for the, on the side. I'm going to mark on this arm. Right here. Actually, this pressure point is where this muscle ends and attaches to the large bone. 
I've given you a touch point, a rub point, this is a hit point. To attack the hit, hit point, <clears throat> I'm going to have you hold your right hand out. You can hold yours out too, right hand. And bend your wrist like that, backwards. And now feel this muscle that pulls your muscle tight. I'll have you attack that point with this. With this. With the back of your arm. Only because you will not injure each other. That's a hit point. In a combat situation, I would punch or hit that point with my knuckles and he'll respond faster because it's a hit point. But if we all pair off and hit each other's hit point, we're going to make a black and blue. If you're a lot larger than your opponent, you could injure the tendon. You could even injure the bone if you're larger than your opponent knuckling him. I'm going to have, you, have your opponent grab you. Hold tight. Pivot the bottom hand up just a little bit like that. And you're going to attack on the inside like that. And that's what will happen. The knees will bend. The hand will release. That's a hit point. You had the touch point. You had the rub point. You had the hit point. If ever I touched the rub one and went to rub it and I didn't get a response, I would immediately hit that one. In a combative situation, I would hit it with knuckles. I would hit it with knuckles. If you do kata, in the martial arts we do kata. These moves are concealed and hidden in kata. Martial artists do this move. And they were taught it, and it was even called an augmented block. Did anybody learn that move? Do you do that move anywhere in your kata? And they'll say it's an augmented block. I always say, look up the word augment in the dictionary. Augment means to help. That ain't helping that hand. And that ain't helping that hand. If it was going to help it, it would be holding it. It's not an augmented block. It's an attack to the pressure point I'm now teaching. How are my knuckles at? At my opponent's arm. If my opponent grabbed me, there would be my augmented block. It's not a block at all. It's a knuckle attack. And if I attack with the knuckles, he's going to let go faster. And his hand tingled because I hit the nerve. Am I correct? The hand will tingle and the hand will go numb if I hit it a little harder than that. That's one place I can put his hand to sleep. By attacking that rapidly. His hand will go down and it will actually go to sleep. So he can't attack you. It's an excellent pressure point for children. For women. I have a new book coming out called Humane Pressure Point Fighting. And this is featured in there because it's a woman that's going to get her purse grabbed. Her, her, maybe something she bought in the store. Her coat, her clothes. It's a child that's going to be grabbed. All it takes is on the grab the impact. You don't have to be that accurate. You just have to be inside the large bone, not up on it. Hold me tight. On the large bone does nothing. Nothing. It only hurts me. But just by going to this side of the bone, the slightest tap. Now, I'm not going to knuckle him again, because then he will get a black and blue if I keep doing it. But I'll hit him with the back of my arm like this. And again, it can look like the augmented block. And I have my move. This is one you can do a cross arm grab. If he grabs this arm, I still must remember that the pressure point is on that side of the large bone. Not on this side, hold tight. Nothing here. It's over here. And his knees buckle. That's the response that you're correct. When I tap somebody on their arm, and I get this, that is the response that you are totally correct on the point. That is actually his safety device. He cannot stop that. No one can. When I hit you, if your knees buckle, that's how I experiment to find out if the point is right. No matter where I hit you on the pressure point or rub it or touch it, if your knees do this, I know that I am <clears throat> right on the point and I'm doing the correct thing to it. Because your safety device is to do this and take the pressure off. Because I am sending a message on your nerve further than the one-third. 
and that kicks out to save the organ. So your knees kicking out absorb the shock so that the pressure doesn't go in and injure your organ. So there you have that. We do the response here. If he grabs here, I just must come to that side of the body. How many moves in basic kata go like this? How many moves in basic kata go like that? We were told that was a down block. That's a preparatory for the down block. Wrong. You and I know that in a fight situation, if I go like this, he's already kicked me. If I go like this, he's already punched me. It is the moves coming towards my body that are more important than the moves going in his body. Everybody knows that if I hit him, I can hurt him. But if I come this way on these pressure points, I disable what was hurting me. If he were going to punch at me, I have boxers who like to stick out that left jab at me in training. I attack him here once, quick, and the fight's over. If he wanted to punch, tight fist coming at me, and I attack this spot, <clears throat> this controls his fist. This controls his fist. This controls his wrist, and this controls his wrist. When I attack here, the fist will give. Be like pudding. If he were coming in with a punch at me, and I hit here, his fist will want to open. And even if he hit me, he would break it because of that pressure point. And that's why so many kata moves go like that. You're attacking that. There's moves that go like this, then go like that. There's moves that go like this, and go like that. If he grabs me here, this is going to go here. That's going to strike the proper angle and direction. It's going to numb his arm if I really hit him with the technique, take his arm away from me, and my next move is to step in and strike. And I'm going to take my opponent out. Kind of moves that go like this, and then go like that. If he grabbed me, this would attack. Bang! Boom! I not only create the opening, but I send the neurological message at the same time. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you're allowed to move the hand he grabbed. If he grabbed me here, I'm allowed to move this hand. Don't leave it here because his pressure point can be aimed down towards the floor. I want to move it up. I'm allowed to move this hand. Kata moves, go like this. Bang. How many people do a move in a kata? Do you do kata? Yes. I'm meeting these people for the first time in my life. Just so everybody knows that during this film, I don't know you, the big guy, do I know you? I just met you today, right? Yes, you, I just met you today. Yes, I didn't even ask what style people are. Pressure points fit in anybody's style. Some people go out and they go, oh, well, that's his style. He uses that. We use something different. There is nothing different. Pressure points control this whole guy's being, standing. And let me explain the difference between pressure point and vital point. Because that's the biggest confusion in the magazine. People say, we use pressure points. We attack the eyes, the throat. They're vital points. Vital points are eyes, ears, nose, throat, groin. Vital to your seeing. Vital to your breathing. Vital to your hearing. They're not pressure points. Everybody in the world has a natural defense for their vital points. There isn't anybody in the world, if you go at his eyes, doesn't do this. There isn't anybody in the world, if you try to hit him in the throat, doesn't go like that. And there isn't anyone in the world, if you try to kick at their groin, doesn't go like that. I don't care what country they're from. It's an automatic that's built into you. It's in your subconscious, and you will protect the vital points at all costs. You remember that from your kid. If they're going to spank your honey, both hands went back. <laughs> the vital point back there. <laughs> but you respond. You don't have any way to block the pressure point. You'll block the eyes. You'll block the throat. But there's no way you're going to block because the pressure points are all over, and you don't know which ones I'm attacking. How many people in a kata do a move? Do you do kata? Yes, 
What colors do you do? I do Cheongjongbang colors. Do you do Ping, Pinon, Hyeon? Cheonji. Okay, do you do one of this? Yeah, yes sir. Oh, do that move for me. Okay, what were you told that move is for? They never really explained it. Okay, but did you ever hear that the low one's blocking a kick and the high one's blocking a punch? That's what they told me. How many people have learned that move? And how many were told this one's blocking a kick, this one's blocking a punch? Do that move. And your feet go together, am I correct in that kata? Most of them. Yes, yes. This is blocking a punch, this is blocking a kick. Who do you know that fights like this? <laughs> Nobody. No and then you get to do another one, which means the guy, don't stay here, the guy jumps. <laughs> and you pull your feet together. You're off balance. Am, is that correct? Yes, sir. You're off balance. Do you know why your feet, I'm going to teach you something right now, yes, on the camera. Do you know why your feet pull together? Yes, sir. If you understand fighting, a good fighting, a fighter, learns to just stay away from the punch, but yet stay close enough to hit his opponent. Your feet pull together to get you close to your opponent, to attack him. Understand that? Now you're here. I'm going to pull you out here so we get camera action. You grab me. Hold tight. You're a person who's grabbed me out in the street. Couldn't that happen? Yes, that could even be a lady. I could be a lady. That could be my purse arm. Sure. This hand, let go for a minute. This hand will come up like that. This hand will hit and go down like that. Because I want to pull the nerve and the pressure point up into my collision. And my feet go together to get me close enough to attack you. To attack you with the next technique. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. That makes more sense than block, block. Yes, sir. <laughs> what happened? Most martial arts came to this country after World War II. And the word block became the cop-out. And I don't care if you're Taekwondo, I don't care if you're Okinawan Karate, which I am, I don't care if you're Japanese Karate, I don't care if you're Chinese Karate. When you do the katas and forms, there are no blocks in the kata and form. That's the way it was 750 years ago when the first kata was created. From that first kata came everybody's kata regardless of style. So I don't let anybody tell me I'm Taekwondo, I'm Japanese, I'm, it doesn't matter. They all history out of one kata and branch like that and the other katas were shortened based on the pressure points that the instructor knew. And some instructors didn't know them all. I only went in depth to know them all so I could do my study. You don't have to know them all. If he only learned 10 pressure points and left here today, he'd have a better self-defense than when he walked in that door. Because somebody would touch him, he'll numb their arm with this technique. And he can hit him with that technique. I show you on Bob because the <laughs> this pressure point is very dangerous to hit. We call that a triple warmer point, which is a fire point. Triple warmer 23. But the reason that is dangerous is because this bone, this bone, if broke into the eye, will blind your opponent for life. And this bone is only an inch long, maybe a little longer on some taller people. This bone. It starts at the curve and goes down to the end of your eye. That's the easiest bone to break in the human body. I can show you that in medical books. It's hollow. It doesn't have marrow. It's a little hollow bone. And this pressure point is an entry into that, breaking that bone. That's where my up hand would have struck him. My knuckles are aimed down. I am the correct angle and direction. Kata and form were created to map out the weaknesses of the human body. And there's no blocks. I was told by the first instructor that introduced me to this, his name was Hohan Sokin. 1972, he was 83 years old. He said, we did not teach this because of World War II. I think it's about time that you know why you're doing your kata. 
When I was with him, I was four years a national kata champion in the United States. I can show you hundreds of trophies for doing katas, but I didn't know why I was doing my katas. He introduced me to it. I actually got a little depressed after that because I had 25 schools in my system that all think, uh, thought I knew everything there was about the martial arts. And here I'm finding out I didn't. That I didn't know anything. I knew the right moves. So I'm glad I paid attention to Kata. Because the Kata mapped out all the weaknesses to attack these points. And where you're attacking with that up one is here, and where you're attacking with the low one is at the floating rib, which is directly on the side. You can even attack where the gallbladder comes in. Because when I show you feet pressure points, we attack the gallbladder on the foot on our step up or our move with our feet and set up a point that's in your ribs to make it very weak for attack. And when I attack, I knock your arm off with this technique and as I step up with this technique, and I would really be more to the front, I don't want to block the camera, but the low hand is going to strike at your floating rib, making you go like that at the same time that strikes that point. Does that make sense? It makes more sense than block, block. The word block, I was told, was a cop-out because the Americans ask too many questions. <laughs> What's this move? Double block. What's this move? Single block. What's this? Inside block. What's this? High block. Low block. There, none of them are blocks. They are all geared to angle and direction and attack a pressure point. And that's why they were created in the kata, to map it out in your mind. In your mind, I'm attacking because I cannot hit this individual often in that spot. Because if I did it with knuckles, I would break the bone. But I can in my mind practice and pair off with him and knock his hand off and just go to his eye in practice. And then I can do my kata and add realism to the technique and slam this in, wham, and we'd hit him up here and we'd hit him here at the same time. And my knuckles would be right because this would have sent him coming down at me, this would hit him up there. So if he grabs me, this is why we pull the feet together. If I do it here, I'm not close enough to hit you, right? It would just be this. But I want this. And I'll just tap. Understand now? What did you feel? Tell the people what you feel. And pain <laughs> and dizziness. And his eyes are dilated. If you you won't get that with the camera, but the, the pupil dilated from just that touch. I only touched that point. If I'd have knuckled it, the pain would have been more severe, which you understand. His vision would have been totally gone. And I left out the rib because I didn't want to injure him. Thank you. But yes, yes. <laughs> but I would add the rib, and then my technique would be one, two. If I'm practicing that in my mind, I can be at home doing my kata by myself and I can improve my technique because my mind is improving my technique. And I can be on .dojotv.com with an opponent and when I practice it on my opponent at this slow pace, I'm improving my kata at home. And when I'm at home, I'm practicing and getting better at my technique for when I come here or any seminar, or even to any dojo.com. <laughs> what I want you to practice is have the person grab you. I want you to hammer down and come to here. Don't do this. If you do, just move your hands, don't hit him. Because remember, in a real situation, hold me tight. Hold tight, tight, tight. In a real situation, if I hit him here, he's coming at me for that to be the correct angle and direction. Understand? And a person on the street is going to grab you with meaning. That's why I want you to grab me with meaning. 
I want you to grab me a meaning. We don't do anything fake with what I do. Like I said, I introduce these people. I only met them for the first time today. I go all over the world and, and meet the people for the first time as I walk in the door. And then the pressure points work. And they're going to work out in the street. They're going to work on anybody. I have a whole quarter here to hit. I have a whole quarter. If I take a quarter here, you mean I can't hit it? You bet I can. Besides, I have another spot. If I don't hit, I have a quarter here. I have a quarter here. I can put a 25 cent piece here, 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 here. I just have to take the top hand. And in my mind, when I do my kata, every time my top knuckle envisions a different point that's attacking. And I don't care what style you are, if you do anything that even looks like this move, at some point you have to. We only can move our hands as humans so far. And if you do this move, it's certainly a better explanation when you're practicing it. And it's a quick way out of self-defense and for somebody getting their purse grab or a businessman with his briefcase or a student that you're training, or a policeman, they try to take his knife, his gun, he locks, the same technique works. You can ask my friend, uh, French Adul, about that. I have one policeman on my police tape, says it, it actually saved his life, because he was grabbed by a whole bunch of teenagers, they were gonna take his gun away. And one locked his arm, and he used the same technique I just taught. When they grabbed his, uh, uh, one grabbed the gun, one, he just locked, he did the same technique with one hand, tapped the guy in the eye, didn't punch him. And the guy went back, pain, and lost vision, and it made the rest easy. If they grab you with the opposite hand, you just come over to this side and attack and hit. I want everybody to pair off and work on that pressure point. Thank you. Isn't that good? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, sir. Get like Wired. You have electricity. And your pressure points have electricity. Did you know that? Yeah. And you're wired the same as this building. If all of a sudden lights go out, they're going to be running for the circuit breaker panel. When we do our knockout, so to say, or tap somebody, when we tap them behind the neck, rub here, that brings them back. That's a circuit breaker panel is your spine. We correct all your problems on the back. That's why as you learn this, when you really learn how to hurt people, you gotta learn how to heal people. We're gonna do a tape for Dojo TV on just healing one time. Because it's very important. It might even be more important than the hurting one. Because the healing tape has actually saved, that I have, has actually saved people's lives. Two that I know of. A little kid was hit with a baseball out in Indiana, Petersburg, Indiana, and that baseball stopped that little kid's heart and the mother was studying my tape and, and for years, and she started her kid's heart, and that kid's now graduating or graduated from college this year. That happened back when he was 10 years old. But I want to explain something, because a lot of, a lot of Taekwondo do, do this. Now, now that I have this on the tape, everybody's going to know why. I usually tell people, don't tell anybody outside this room, but now the whole world's going to know. <clears throat> Taekwondo will shake hands and go like this. You ever see that? But there's moves like this in Kata. Aren't there moves like this in kata? You do move like that, or like this, or like that, or like that. There's somewhere you touch yourself. Even here, you touch it. You touch yourself, but you're touching yourself. And when they stick that hand out and you touch, any neurological pain to this arm is sent on that nerve as a message. If I put him in pain, I drop him. I have one pressure point only. But it could be the one that I showed for rubbing. It could be the one I showed for touching. It could be the one I showed for hitting. The, ner the nerve sends pain to the organ. If I put one pressure point like this, he'll go down. But if he touches his own arm, the minute, the minute you feel pain, even if you start towards the floor, do that. Resist. No pain.
Got it? Now watch. Now watch. Hold tight. Hold your arm. Now let go. <laughs> you, the people that do this when they shake hands, are protecting the weapon that's out there. He's not your friend. I, I'm not going to demonstrate that here in the tape, but at my, at my seminars, I'll get a big, strong guy to squeeze some little girl's hand when there's hands shaking. And I tell the little girl, the minute it hurts you, touch your arm. It won't hurt you anymore. That's part of our, what we call one second fighting. That's part of what we call the iron shirt. Not all of it. Because my fourth book will be about the iron shirt. But it's part of it. If I am hurting this hand in any way, finger any, and he does that, I can still break a joint with power. But I cannot send a neurological message that would injure his major organ. Do you understand that? I am not sending the neurological message. He does not feel anything except power hurting his finger. And the minute he lets go, the neurological pain goes. But you know what that's for? My book's called One Second Fighting. Let's say he's injuring me. This is your turn to hurt me. Ben, I touch. He can't hurt. It gives me one second to attack. And what I forgot to explain, <laughs> this is positive of your right hand. Hold up your right hand. No, open hand. That's positive electricity. Your left hand is negative electricity. Got that? When you close them, they reverse. Everybody hold up your right hand. Positive electricity. Negative electricity. Except women. Women don't. Your women are opposite. Women are opposite. Women, this is negative, this is positive. <clears throat> His head is divided in four. In four. This is positive, this is negative electricity. They teach women, keep your teeth together, to, to knock his hands away, which we showed you is wrong, and to hit him under the chin or under the nose. They even say, you don't need that, even though I ain't going to do anything to your glasses. <laughs> they say if you hit him under the nose, you'll break his nose and drive it into his brain. That's totally wrong. Ask any doctor. And a woman is not going to hurt a man, keep your teeth together, by hitting under here. She has to hit here. In the middle of the jaw, there's a hit point called stomach five. There's an energy that comes down from the temple.